Well, we find ourselves in a very unfortunate situation where in F1, we actually now have technically an autumn break. And I mean, we just came off the back of a summer break. We've got also an autumn break part two coming up anytime after the triple header. And then we also have a winter break. So right now you could say F1 content is a little bit sparse. So in a world where there is no F1 content left for anyone to make, only Zach F1 can make the rankings of every single F1 race so far this season, with sprint races included, as a video. And genuinely, in all seriousness, F1 has hit an all-time low of news. I don't know how many stories they can make of Ricardo leaving. I love him, but they're copy and pasting the exact same articles, just with different headlines. And then they're also still talking about Newey because nothing's happening. Honestly, Bahrain started off again like a little mini version of the 2023 season wrapped up in new fancy packaging. Verstappen won by about 20 seconds. Perez was P2, which tells you the rest of the story with the rest of the field. No one else was anywhere close to the Red Bull. And it looked like that's how it was going to be the rest of the season. Honestly, even in this race, we didn't have a saving grace of an Aston Martin like Alonso looking really good, which came out of the blue last season. So sadly, we actually start off with 18 out of 18. This for me was the worst race of the season so far. Another Verstappen masterclass heading into the Jetta Grand Prix with him winning by 13 seconds. Again, to Perez, but as we all know, Perez is very good in these sorts of circuits. Uh, there is a weird correlation. This race had its moments. It had Magnussen doing some crazy work for Haas, basically blocking off the V-Cars from getting any points and literally making sure Hulkenberg got that 10th place. Slowing down in Sector 1 so much that Hogenberg got a pit stop on all of them. It was an incredible move by him, but it wasn't a move that was very smart for his points on his license. But also, we had a new driver in Ferrari as Carlos Sainz didn't enter the race because he had to get rid of his appendix. We had the first British driver for Ferrari in F1 since 1999, which was Eddie Irvine. And it was just incredible that Oli Behrman got this seat and he delivered. That was one of the special moments of the race, as he then got a solid performance, beating quite a few high profile people such as Norris and Hamilton. For me, the biggest surprise of this race was that Logie Bear didn't get the win with the least laps raced. So he, technically he finished first with 48 laps compared to everyone basically else on 50 laps. But all in all, another really tame race for F1. There was really only the K-Mag and Behrman stuff in the race. There was a decent battle going on with Piastri and Hamilton but nothing too crazy so for me it goes 14th out of 18. Going into one of if not the most hyped races of the season because everyone loves coming to Australia and off the back of such an amazing race last season a lot of people were very excited for this track and it definitely did not deliver it wasn't the greatest race now on paper it seems like it was a brilliant race. A 1-2 for Ferrari with, with Sainz winning with Norris third place. No sight of any Red Bull, which was crazy at that time of the season. But when you look deeper into it, the only things that really happened in that race was Verstappen's brakes exploding. Both Mercedes deciding they don't want to take part in the race anymore. But there wasn't much overtaking. There wasn't much drama. Pretty much just that. It was the start of the race and then it just dwindled off and off. So for me, the biggest surprise was that Stroll didn't actually crash out of the race. He finished the race and he actually got sixth. So fair enough to him. He would not be repeating that anytime soon. And of course, it was the start of some great form for Yuki Tsunoda, the GOAT, going into the next few races. But for me, my ranking is 13th out of 18, and it gets a lot of help from the mania of the Ferrari 1-2 with a McLaren as third, because at that time, it was a lot of the Dutch national anthem, so people just would have got crazy for any other thing, which both times were Carlos Sainz, so fair enough. What an iconic circuit in Suzuka it really is. However, for 2024, it was straight back to business with how the Red Bulls run it, with the Red Bulls getting a 1-2. But for me, 
it wasn't actually a terrible race. You had a few things going on that really did save it. So first of all, you had the really bad sour pit stops carrying on happening. This was happening all over the season, but it was just so entertaining seeing how long the sour pit stops could take. Sometimes they'd take over a minute to get just four tires on and off of an F1 car. It was ridiculous. They had a massive issue with that. We also had the crash between Albon and Ricardo, which stirred up a lot of drama because whose fault was it? I'm going to leave it up to you lot. Heated debate at a time considering how well Sonoda was doing and how badly Ricardo was doing. And then we also had a great recovery drive from Charles Leclerc coming from all the way nearer to the back of the top 10 to fourth place. So again, it wasn't a terrible race considering it was just another Red Bull 1-2, but it wasn't amazing. You only really had the crash at the start, the Leclerc's race and everything else was a bit normal F1 at that point, which means it goes 15 out of 18th. The biggest surprise, honestly, was that Yuki Tsunoda didn't get a drive of the day and he got points at his home race. The GOAT deserves better. Now off we went to the first sprint race of the season and that of course is in China. What a race we actually had. So I'll talk about the sprint race first because technically it's a race thingy. I don't really know what it is. No one really knows what it is at this point. But a quick summary of it is Hamilton ended up P2 which was amazing to see. Norris finished sixth after getting pole position for the sprint race because he went wide so it was a bit of an issue for him Alonso crashed out and Joe almost got points finishing ninth which is incredible for the Sauber so for me it goes second out of three sprint race weekends this season so far now onto the actual race and it was again a pretty decent race for this season so far Bottas retired out of the race again potentially on the cusp of getting points for Sauber which was a real shame for them but that brought out the safety car which then led to Stroll forgetting how to use his brakes and crashing into poor Daniel Ricciardo which was carnage and then on the restart K-Mag then just took out the GOAT which was really frustrating if you had him in F1 Fantasy considering Magnussen carried on and got one of the most amount of points for a cheap driver on that weekend I digress but it was honestly a decent race and then at the end we saw Fernando Alonso going for the fastest lap it probably was the best race of the season so far. And for me, it goes 11th out of 18. The biggest surprise, again, like I said, was probably Alonso getting that fastest lap. Home of the infamous fake marina and home of the most influencers you are going to see at an F1 circuit. And for once some pretty good racing again the f1 season got a lot better as it went on as you can sort of tell but this was really good from f1 again we had another sprint race so i'll give a quick summary of that with verstappen winning ricardo with the biggest surprise coming in fourth and hulkenberg coming seventh and the go eighth but honestly it has been the best sprint race so far of this season so for me it goes first out of all three sprint races now onto the actual race we technically had our first legitimate on pace winner that wasn't a red bull because in this race norris technically did get gifted because of the safety car but after the safety car he actually started getting a gap on verstappen which was incredible to see that real shift of momentum from red bull dominating everyone to everyone sort of getting a lot closer especially mclaren but not only did Norris win that race, but it was great battling elsewhere. You had Oscar Piastri and Carlos Sainz crashing into each other. You had Magnussen and Sargent crashing into each other. Two crashes caused by Magnussen in two races. You had the GOAT finishing in seventh place. And for me, the biggest surprise of the race was you actually saw a tractor get into the top 10. Esteban Ocon was able to get that Alpine, which looked dreadful at the start of the season, into the top 10 for points for Alpine. Incredible scenes for them. It really was a big surprise that weekend. So all in all, F1 got a new winner that weekend. There was lots of carnage and brilliant overtaking taking place at that race. So for me, Miami goes seventh out of 18. Very good first race over the middle ground of ninth place. Now this race was very fun to watch. We actually had one of the first races where multiple teams at different points looked like the fastest car. We had McLaren, Ferrari and Red Bull all looking pretty decent in that weekend at different points of the race. The race ending was brilliant. Norris was a second behind Verstappen because Verstappen was starting to lose it and Norris was trying to catch him. 
We had Leclerc at points looking very fast. We had some decent racing elsewhere. But all in all, the issue with Imola is you can't really overtake on it. And that did hinder sort of how good the race was. On paper, it looks pretty good. But then if you actually watch the race, it was pretty dull. Uh, the biggest surprise for me was that Sergeant Zhou didn't actually finish last. That was Fernando Alonso, surprisingly, who finished 19th. Incredible scenes for Sergeant and Zhou. I hope someone threw both of them a party. But all in all, for a race where Verstappen won again, McLaren was showing pace, Ferrari was showing pace. It was a great race. And for me, it gets a solid 9th out of 18. Proper middle ground, not as good as Miami, but still a very decent race. Then moving on to round eight, where we go to the crown jewels of F1, which of course is the Monaco Grand Prix. And again, like always, it was one of the most dull weekends we've seen of F1. There was only actually four overtakes this season at Monaco, and the top 10 did not change at all from qualifying to the race. That's how dull it was. The only saving grace for Monaco was literally that Leclerc won it, breaking the Leclerc curse at Monaco, what, the Leclerc-Monaco curse. So that was great to see. But bar that, it really wasn't a good race. And those cars are just too big for Monaco. The biggest surprise that happened in that race it has to be that there was even four overtakes. It was incredible. And the only real bit of craziness we had in the race was Perez crashing into both Hasses at the start of the race. And Carlos Sainz again crashing into Piastri getting a puncture. But he got that place reinstated on the restart. But bar from lap one, it was a very dull race. And one I was a little bit falling asleep on. So for me, it has to go 17th out of 18. Honestly, I could sum this race up with just one word. And that is perfect. This race was the epitome of what F1 can be. There was rain, then there wasn't. Then there was a bit more rain, then there wasn't. It was carnage. We had rain at the start where everyone started on the inters, bar the hash drivers who started on the wets, and had an incredible drive getting both of them into the top 10. But then pit stops came around because the Inters came into effect and they dropped straight back down. But it was great to watch them at the start. You had a Ferrari masterclass getting Leclerc on dries when the track was still wet. Basically, the ruining their entire weekend. Ferrari actually had a double DNF that weekend with signs crashing and Leclerc just retiring because he had issues with the car and he was nowhere near the top 10 at that point. Then more rain came, we had more chaos with Sargent bringing out the safety car. At multiple different points of the race, there looked like different people who could win. Russell at one point looked like he could win, Norris looked like he could win, and Verstappen looked like he could win. It was a great race considering, again, on paper, it looks like a normal generic Verstappen win, but it was anything but that. And again, for God's sake, we actually had a double points finish for Alpine. Again, at that point of the season... Alpine was such a track day, it was incredible to see both of them getting to the points. Realistically, Gasly probably should have got driver of the day as well. But everything in that race happened, and it was just one of the best races of the season so far. The biggest surprise for me was that Ferrari hadn't done something similar to this this season so far, because that's a very Ferrari thing to do, getting a double DNF. But on my rankings, it 100% is my favourite and has to go first place out of 18. It's a shame at the time I couldn't enjoy it because I did decide to two times Leclerc on F1 Fantasy. But looking back at the race highlights and just looking back a few days after the race, it was such a great race to watch. Spain, we actually had a great qualifying session, but again, I'm not talking about the qualifying sessions. I'm talking about the race results. However, to be fair, it didn't really matter as Norris got pole position, which means that he was going to bottle another pole position going into the first corner, which is exactly what he did. Dropped down to third place with actually George Russell coming up into first place and taking the lead of the Grand Prix. And for a few laps, he did lead, but then Verstappen overtook him. But then we had Verstappen and Norris with Norris chasing Verstappen down losing to him on the final few laps but it was another great chase sequence in f1 that we got to see another great race for mercedes again with russell just throwing himself into the mix for that first little bit of the race which was great to see and it had a lot of great overtakes all over the field which is what we've seen from spain since they did change the layout 
but that means it's great for racing and it means that they can overtake each other at that race. So all in all, for me, that goes 8th out of 18, just a bit better than Imola. And honestly, the only reason is because you can overtake, but both racing wise were very good. It was another sprint race weekend, so I'll first give a quick summary of how the sprint race was. And honestly, it was decent. We had a good little battle between Norris and Piastri, but that was the only real thing that happened. So for me, it goes third out of all three of the sprint races so far we've had. It wasn't anything special. Now onto the actual race, and I think this is the race that we had the best race for the lead this whole season so far it was brilliant and ultimately it led to Norris and Verstappen crashing into each other which then meant that the Mercedes driver George Russell went and won the Grand Prix which was just phenomenal at the time he wasn't anywhere really close to him he was 10 plus seconds behind from them and Norris and Verstappen just one mistake crashed into each other and ruined both of their races also, Hülkenberg had an incredible drive, finishing 6th place, beating Sergio Perez and defending for most of the race. And around Austria, it's really hard to defend uh, very well. So for Hülkenberg to keep a red ball behind, I know it's Perez, but still, it was a great drive. And my God, was the whole second half of the race just incredible. It's a shame the first part of the race was very boring, but that is the reason why it goes into a solid 6th position out of the 18 races. Just better than Miami but nowhere near the likes of Canada. Coming into this weekend, no one would have thought that Mercedes would again, for a second time running, look like they're gonna win a race in F1. But my God, that's exactly what they did. It was another race similar to Canada where we had a lot of stop and starting with the rain. And that obviously again made Mercedes, McLaren and Red Bull pretty decent on pace between each other. At one point, Mercedes looked faster in the wets, then in the intermediate sort of going into the changeable weather conditions, the McLaren looked fastest, and then in the dries, the Red Bull looked fastest. We got to see a well-known feature of this season, which was a McLaren masterclass of strategies, completely ruining Piastri's race, and Norris completely screwing up his pit stop, which then meant Hamilton basically only had to defend from Verstappen. But all in all, we had Hamilton winning his first race of the season and at his home Grand Prix. And Hülkenberg again finishing sixth place in that Haas. He got so many points at this point of the season. The biggest surprise of this race was that Norris didn't get drafted today considering he bottled another easy win for himself by screwing up that pit stop. But this was firmly one of my favourites of the season so far and this definitely slots into third place out of the 18 races. Now we know going into Hungary that it wouldn't be amazing because honestly it's hard to overtake and it's one of the more boring tracks. However, on paper, it looked like a magnificent race with Piastri winning and Norris coming second place. And of course we had those infamous team orders with Norris giving up the win for Piastri after McLaren again screwed up the strategy. We also had Hamilton and Verstappen colliding because Verstappen was getting really annoyed with the team as he did not like the strategy he was on. And again, Yuki Tsunoda got more points coming ninth place. So the biggest surprise for me was Perez actually finished in the top 10 and also he beat another top team driver of George Russell who was starting near the back where he started. It was a great watch for the team order stuff, the Hamilton and Verstappen collision, but it wasn't the most amazing race of the season so far and for that it only gets 10th place out of 18. Well, first of all, it was fantastic that we actually got to race here, first of all, because the way Spa goes, there's so much heavy downpour there. It's not as a 50-50 these days if we actually race there or not, because it just rains too much. But wow, what a race it was. Russell winning on that one-stop strategy. We had so much social media about the tyre whisperer. Alonso did something similar, getting a good result for Aston Martin as well only for Russell to then get disqualified from the race, making Hamilton win his second race within three races in F1. Incredible scenes. It was almost a Mercedes 1-2, which would have meant that four F1 teams had done a 1-2 in F1. Mercedes, Red Bull, Ferrari, and McLaren all in one season. We also had Verstappen and Norris meeting in the middle of the pack, having a good little scrap between both of them. 
Again, no biggest surprise was that Perez still managed to finish again in the top 10 because he did qualify second, which meant he could just about hang on to the rest of the field. Great recovery drive from him to not finish last. But honestly, another banger of a race. And for me, Spa has to easily go in the top five at fifth position out of the 18 races. So we just come back from the long summer break and we've had some brilliant races come up all the way through and everyone was hoping that Zanvoort was going to be similar because of I uh, like Australia last year was a brilliant race to watch however it sort of wasn't that great we had a good battle between Norris and Verstappen at the start of the race again Norris bottled the lead which made it quite entertaining seeing him get back into first place we had a great drive from Leclerc coming from 6th to 3rd place. Albon had a decent recovery drive as well. But all in all, Norris won by 20 plus seconds to the rest of the field. It was very much a Verstappen-esque win. Nothing much happened bar the crazy midfield overtake, which I'll show now. It was incredible. But literally only a few moments in the race were really good to watch. So for me, Netherlands can only come 12th out of 18. And the biggest surprise of this weekend was that Logan Sargent still had his seat in F1. Now we headed off to the land of Ferrari for one more race this season. And my God, does Monza always deliver. We had the Cleur winning Ferrari's home Grand Prix with an amazing strategy doing a one-stop compared to most other drivers doing a two-stop. We had Piastri and Norris. Again, Piastri not letting Norris by, uh, taking more points of his championship hopes. But again, they were both trying to chase down Leclerc and they were getting pretty close by the end. A few more laps, they would have had Leclerc for breakfast. Verstappen could legitimately only manage sixth place and he was not happy about that. And we also had Magnussen getting a race ban, which meant he couldn't actually drive in Baku, which hadn't happened since Roman Grosjean. So it was pretty interesting to see happen. The biggest surprise was actually not for us, but the surprise was Albon probably being surprised as he actually had a half competent teammate for once. So this result plus the great racing at Monza puts this at a brilliant fourth place out of the 18 races. Then another day, another street circuit on the F1 calendar, but this time it's probably one of the better street circuits. We again had a brilliant battle for the lead and this was monumental. We had this all across the race. Leclerc versus Piastri, it was hard, but it was fair. It was immaculate to watch. We also had a great recovery drive to watch from Norris, not so much from Hamilton. Even Perez in Red Bull looked a lot faster than Verstappen for one race, again, because it's Baku. But even he was in the mix of it a little bit and McLaren had to do a cheeky bit of team orders to make sure Piastri stayed ahead of Perez. So Perez was in the fight for the first place. And honestly, Verstappen could only manage fifth again two Back-to-back -back disappointing weekends for Verstappen, losing out to Lando Norris in fourth place. And honestly, the biggest surprise this weekend was that Perez didn't find someone to crash into earlier. It took him until the final laps for him and Sainz to crash into each other. But my God, that also added quite a bit of drama to this race. All in all, this was peak F1 without safety cars, without any changeable weather conditions. And that's why it's very close to Canada but get second out of 18 races so far this season. Then moving on to the final race of this season so far, which was in Singapore. And after all of those races, we literally had three top five races for me in the last four tracks we've been to. You'd think Singapore would follow suit. But again, another day, another street circuit. And on this one, you cannot overtake so yes, it was pretty boring. Again, Norris didn't help, winning by 20 plus seconds. There was no battle for the lead. There wasn't much going on in the midfield. Bar Ricardo getting drive of the day and fastest lap by pitting on one of the last few laps and it being his last race. That was really the most interesting thing that happened in this race. And of course, we saw a great recovery drive from both Ferrari drivers, respectively. Leclerc probably a bit more impressive. 
But my God, that was realistically the only thing that happened that race. So sadly for me, after all of those great races, we go back to 16th out of 18. But anyway, what do you all think of my list? If you like what you saw, like and subscribe. I'd love to know how you think about this list and what your list would be of all of the rankings for the F1 races so far this season. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll be coming out with more F1 content later on this week. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all later. Bye bye.